What's going on guys? Xavier Cottle with Hoctane Analysis bringing you another video here. Uh, today I'm going to be doing um, my NFL tier list for week 7. Um, really just going to be putting these uh, teams where I think they are, where I think they belong uh, at this point in the NFL, or at this point in the season I should say. Um, you know, some of you guys might not like these picks. Uh, you know, and that's okay. Uh, this this is just personally where I think these teams are. Um, that being said, yeah, let's just hop right into it. First team, Seahawks. Now, I might change my mind a little bit through here about where teams should be placed, um, how I'm going to place them. But, yeah, the Seahawks have definitely proved they're an S-tier team, undefeated. Um, really laying it on any team they want. Russell Wilson's looking like... Front runner for the MVP currently, so got to give that one to the Seahawks. Uh, Lions, not a D team, but definitely not a B team either. They're, they're, they they fall pretty. I think C is exactly where they should be. Uh, power ranking wise, uh, I think they would be in the twenties to thirty two. Um, and they're not in the bottom six teams. They're not in the bottom eight. They, you know, they're somewhere um, low twenties. To 20. I don't think they're they they break 20, but I like C for them. I think that's a good placement. Um, Houston is in poverty. Sean Watson showed a little bit of why he's an elite quarterback in the NFL against the Titans. Actually, uh, he looked really good. Um, yeah, this one might piss you off a little bit. Uh, and if you're a Titans fan, you can bite me. Colts run the AFC South, but um, I'm putting them A. I, I'm not sold on the Titans. I think they've had eked out too many wins this season. Uh, the Bills showed that they're not eating at that table with uh, Patrick Mahomes and them. Josh Allen showed he he's a little bit – he can be inconsistent in big games. Uh, so I, I can't give them too much credibility for this win against uh, the Bills. But still yet, the Titans are a good team. And this Steelers test is going to be the really proving point whether I'm going to put this, them in this S tier or not. Because a lot of people do have them in this S tier. And hey, I might be making a mistake putting them up there. But still yet. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to do it until Ryan Tannehill plays this Steelers team and we see what they're really made of when Derrick Henry isn't just going to be able to use like a workhorse and get 260 yards against a mediocre Texans defense who has nobody. That, that's all i got to say. Um, Browns definitely in the A squad. Uh, when they're playing any team but the Steelers, they look dominant. So got to put them there. Bengals, C team. Um, Joe Burrow single-handedly puts them there. They'd be there without Joe Burrow, uh, undoubtedly. Niners first B team. Got to say that Niners definitely. And the reason last week they would not be here, they would be here. But after this week, after this impressive win they had. Uh, I got to put them in the B tier. I think uh, George Kittle, Garoppolo, uh, Debo, Mostert. I think they got the. I think they got the people. You know, I think they got the offense. And then their offensive line, they got some really talented guys on there, uh, young guys or relatively young. Lakin Tomlinson. He came from. Uh, he was drafted in 2015. He's about 20. He 28 right now. Uh, Mike McGlinchey, right tackle. He came uh, out of that 2018 class that had Quentin Nelson. He actually. Uh, played left tackle, and Quentin Nelson played left guard. So if you can imagine that, both first-round picks in the top ten, you can imagine what, how hellacious it was for any coach to scheme for his defensive line playing against Mike McGlinchey and Quentin Nelson. Uh, yeah, yeah it, it must have been a nightmare. Definitely losing sleep on that on that matchup. But still yet, I think the Niners, they've got something there. They've definitely got something there. Um, you know, last year they made the championship – for a reason, and it wasn't because their offense was bad. I'll, I'll tell you that much. It wasn't because their defense was just running stuff, which they were doing really good, but wasn't like groundbreaking or anything. So I, I, I got to put them B. Uh, here in the next few weeks, they might move back up to this A if they can keep this consistent play. Garoppolo keeps playing good, but we'll see. Cardinals, after this win versus the Cowboys, yeah, they're B, 100%. Uh, I would have had them C probably last week. <clears throat> because of how inconsistent they have been. Uh, that loss to the to the Lions actually was really ugly. Uh, where Kyler Murray threw three picks. Yeah, that was that was bad. But still yet, uh, I'll still like 
Cardinals. I think Kyler Murray's a quality uh, quarterback. And against the Cowboys, uh, Kenyon Drake looked really good like he did last year. So I'm happy to see the Cardinals back on track. Hopefully they can keep this up, you know, keep the momentum and ride that into the next week, get another win. Uh, Redskins, poverty. Nothing really else to say about that. They have no quarterback. Josh Allen's their quarterback, and he's throwing picks left and right. Um, Cowboys, defense, butter. And when I say butter, I don't mean their defensive end. Uh, Demarcus Lawrence and Everson Griffin are two solidified, probably Hall of Famer defensive ends. Definitely Demarcus Lawrence, Everson Griffin, uh, arguably. Um, still yet. I just – the Cowboys' interior defensive line play is the worst in the league possibly. Uh, their secondary is just playing horrible. I mean, the Cowboys are just bad. Uh, and I think it's really coaching more than it is personnel at this point. Um, but still yet. Uh, until they put it together, I'm keeping them D-tier. I don't think they're a good team. Uh, Eagles, the last two games have looked really good. Even though they've been losses um, – Against the Ravens, it was they looked pretty decent. And against the Steelers, they didn't look half bad. Nowhere near as bad as the Browns did, I'll say that much. And I still got the Browns up here. Uh, you know, the Browns being up here, I understand, yeah, that's a horrible loss. But they beat the Colts. They got two turnovers off Phillip Rivers, who turned around and threw three touchdowns. So, uh, Browns are still going to remain a until further notice, until they really show me that, hey, they're, uh, Baker Mayfield's going to really destroy their season because how bad he is. But... Whenever they can just run the ball, hey, they're solid. They're good. But, yeah, uh, Eagles, it's good. I think C's a good place for them. Um, if they had more offensive weapons, they'd move B or A 100%. But they just four, – four, they're missing four offensive linemen. Um, and then the fifth one they have, who is Jason Kelsey, who I'm pretty sure, from what I've heard around the league, is regressing this year pretty rapidly. So that that's bad to hear. I, I love Jason Kelsey. I, Great player, probably a Hall of Fame center. Um, but, yeah, Dolphins, this is a tough one. They're a quiet 3-3. Three and three. And if there was a C plus B minus, they would be there. Hands down. Um, but they just put a rookie quarterback in. Mm, I don't know. The Dolphins are, yeah, I'll say this. Dolphins got to go B. And the only reason I'm doing that, they're not better than this team. They're not better than this team, but they're better than all three of these guys. I'll say that much. Uh, and then when it comes to, and they're closer to these two teams than they are closer to them. You, you know what I'm saying? When I'm talking about overall team-wise, uh, I think Flores is a great coach there, and I think they got a lots of playmakers. Uh, Fitzpatrick's played really good. They benched him, but I think Tua is going to come in and put him work with uh, all these playmakers they have on this Dolphin squad. Good running back depth. Yeah, I, th I think they're poised. And they've had better offensive line play this year. Um, yep. Rams, A tier. Uh, they have some quality defensive linemen and the best defensive linemen, in my opinion, to ever walk the face of this earth. In Aaron Donald, the dude is just a one-man wrecking machine. Uh, last game, I will say this, last game, the 49ers had the best game plan I've ever seen uh, to really combat them. And I, if other teams see this, it could be a bad, bad news for the Rams. And what they were doing, they were just going away from Aaron Donald. So every play, they had a double-team Aaron Donald, slide protecting to him, and then they only targeted Jalen Ramsey twice. And these are the two guys that are really going to – they're so good that they're going to destroy your – Oh, off of offensive game plan their self if you let them. So uh, they, they came in um, with a really good plan the 49ers did, and they beat the Rams because of it. But I still think the Rams are a good offense. I think they're going to get back on track this next week, um, get to, get back to what they're doing, running Cam Akers, and then uh, Jared Goff hitting people, you know, doing his thing. I, I, think, I think they'll get back on track. But that was a pretty ugly loss. I don't think they were prepared – for uh, how well the 49ers came out and played. Um, yeah, poverty. Uh, I guess I'll talk about the talk about them a little bit. Um, I don't know. They, they're a really hard team to gauge. And, and I said poverty. Okay, I, I take that back. I'm sorry, Atlanta fans. I'm sorry. Um, I think... 
they're better than these three teams. Even though they lost to them, at, at the current point with no Dak Prescott, they're definitely better than them. Um, but until they show me some wins, Atlanta has a really soft schedule coming up. If they show me some wins, yeah, I'll move them up C. I don't think they'll make B the rest of the season just because of how bad their defense is. But if they show me they show me something, yeah, they'll get moved up. But until then, um, yeah, their defense is horrible. And no, no other ways to put it. No defense in this league, and you're letting people score 40 a night, you're not competing. You let people score 35, 30 a night, you're not competing. That's how it's going to work on a weekly basis. Um, okay, next team here, Baltimore. Baltimore's got to go to the S tier. We know that. Baltimore is a filthy squad. Um, offense and defensive wise. Uh, I'm hearing t things that Antonio Brown may be going to Baltimore or the Seahawks. And a lot of people are saying that they're gonna he's gonna lean towards Baltimore more because of uh Hollywood Brown is cousins with Antonio Antonio Brown. So uh we could be seeing the, the cousin duo there and then Lamar Jackson, Mark Andrews, you know, the squad over there. That would be a crazy offense. I'd love to see that. Uh, as much as I wish, you know, Antonio Brown would go to my Colts, but, I mean, if he went to the Baltimore Ravens, I'm a fan of football at the end of the day, so I'd still be hyped to see that. Um, Buccaneers? This is a tricky one. This is a real tricky one. Uh, you know, I would not – their loss to the Bears really, really showed me that they can't play well against a truly elite defense, which is bad. Uh, very bad. Like, Tom Brady – Played against that defense, Chuck Pagano's coach Bears, and realized, wow, it is going to be difficult come playoff time. Um, he dissected this Green Bay. He didn't really dissect this Green Bay defense. I would say it was more of momentum and his run game working, and pretty much everything was working for him that game. Green Bay just did not look like they just took him lightly or something. It was like they didn't care to be there. I uh, hated to see that, but I, I got to put them A tier. Uh, they've had. That loss to the Bears, I still can't. I'm I'm not giving them the benefit of the doubt, even though they beat Green Bay, who is undefeated team. Yeah, I understand that, but they still showed they're vulnerable uh, in certain games, and especially when they play a good defense or great defense, they're they're going to have a hard time scoring. So I, I can't put them S tier. Um, God Godwin wasn't in the game against the Bears, but still yet, I don't think he would have changed the outcome of that game very much. The Bears were just playing lockdown defense. Um, Bills. This is another one, but i got to put the Bills S tier. I think Bills are up there. Uh, I think they play – Josh Allen showed vulnerability against the uh, vulnerable – Bill. Blah, blah, blah. I can't even say it, man. You know what word I'm trying to say. He showed that against the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, I, I get that. And then he had an ugly loss against the Titans. Two losses in a row. Oh, the sky's falling. It's really not. Um, their defense, Tredavious White, like they just have so much on that defensive side. And when Kyle Williams retired, who did they get in the draft this year? Ed Oliver, a very talented defensive tackle. The Bills are lead on defense. They're lead on offense when Josh Allen's playing his uh, standard, uh, his best ability of ball. Uh, his completion percentage uh, went from like 52% last year to like 63 this year, like 11% jump, something ridiculous. You know, so the Bills are elite right now. They got, they got it right now. Uh, Devin Singletary's playing good. Their offensive lines came along. They got really good. Uh, uh, he's got a really good offensive line in front of him. Um you know, and he's got Stephon Diggs now. He's got a he's got a big target, big big name target. So I gotta leave them him and S. Uh, this is a tricky team too, um, because when it comes to these three teams right here, I'm saying he's beating them. Uh, the Chargers. I said uh, I'm talking about Justin Herbert. I, I really like Justin Herbert a lot, but when it comes to these teams. Can he beat a well-coached San Francisco team? Can he outscore Kyler Murray and D-Hop? Can he uh, do good against this uh, Ryan Flores team, well-coached, good defensive squad, uh, Xavion Howard, and um, I forgot the other guy's name. It, it, it's hard to say, but I, I'm still going to have to put the Chargers seats here because their defense, as good as their defense should be personnel-wise, you know, Joey Bosa, I think Melvin Ingram's injured, Derwin James is injured. That's unfortunate. 
But uh, if they had the, both them guys, yeah, they'd definitely be maybe A. Them are two big name guys that really make an impact. And without them, I think this Charger squad is is still destined for mediocrity this year at a C tier. Uh, they could maybe sneak in at an A to eight and make it to this B tier possibly. Uh, but I don't I don't see it. Justin Herbert is one man with Keenan Allen and Mike Williams, and he would just really have to do a lot. He'd have to do so much to get them to that level of play, and I just don't see it happening for him personally. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, on to the Broncos here. Broncos, C tier. Uh, Broncos showed some might against this uh, Patriots team. And uh, I really liked that. I liked what uh, the Broncos showed me that game. Drew Locke didn't play exceptionally well, but he's coming off injury, and he, you know, he he's really. If he would have started from this, if he would have been there from the start of the season, this game he wouldn't have threw them two picks. I, I'll say that much. And I think he's he's uh, going to have a few more get growing pain games. And when I say a few more, probably five or six before he really settles in and feels comfortable. But once he does, him and Jerry Judy are going to be dangerous by the end of this season. Uh, and I really can't wait for that. It's going to be really cool to see. Noah Fant, too. If, I, if I'm not mistaken, he plays for the Broncos, I think. Uh, I know they got a really good young tight end. I don't know if it's Noah Fant in particular, but I think it is. Um, yeah, they, they, got some, they got some talent on that Broncos roster. And then you got Philip Lindsay and Melvin Gordon one-two punch at the running back. It's just that roster's good. I'll say that much. If Vaughn Miller and then have, and then two people in their secondary weren't injured, this Broncos team would be definitely easily a B team. Um, maybe an A, depending on how Drew Locke was playing, if he hasn't been injured from the start of the season. But for now, I have to leave them C. I don't think they're better than these three teams. Uh, Colts, got to put them A. Uh, if it would let me. Whoa. Oh. What is going on? This website is dying right now. Come on. All right. Did it work? Did I get I think I did. Yeah, okay. Move them back up here. Damn, what the Whatever. Anyways, yeah, I gotta put the Colts up here. You know who the Colts got. DeForest Buckner, Darius Leonard, Xavier Rhodes, who's uh having a complete career revitalization this year. Uh when targeted last year he gave up a eighty percent catch rate. Now he's to a forty percent. Literally, you know, a hundred percent better. Literal. Um he he's just looking so much better. And then you got Julian Blackman who's looking like maybe the best uh you know defensive rookie in the league even though he won't win it because Malik Hooker played the first three games he's looking like the best defensive rookie in this uh um in the league uh play-wise he's passing that eye test for me um and then Philip Rivers is coming off of his best game he's played all season 370 yards three touchdowns one pick looked like a absolute machine against this um against the uh, Bengals here uh, I really want to see more of that. And the reason I don't think he's been able to play to that standard is because we've had so many injuries on this Colts team, like um, Michael Pittman, our second early second-round pick, Paris Campbell, our early second-round pick the year prior, both injured last season and this season. This Colts, this Colts roster has been riddled with injuries in the receiver core the last two years, and it's really hampered them. But uh, Phillip Rivers made it happen yesterday getting everyone involved. Um, Trey Burton was a man on a mission yesterday, running the read option for a touchdown. Not yesterday, Sunday, I should say. Running the read option for a touchdown and um, catching one on the sideline, dragging both his feet in for a touchdown. Trey Burton looked like a beast, and he's a really good addition to this Colts uh, squad. Mar Frank Reich's doing it the right way. He's calling up, scheming up all these crazy plays for him. Uh, I'd love to see it. So, yeah, I think i got to leave them A. Patriots, I don't know. They're teetering. I, I will say this, Patriots, right now, these teams are the worst, and that's crazy to say because after the first couple weeks, Cam Newton was looking like uh, he was on a mission from God himself or something, just the way he was playing. But 
uh, after last week versus the uh, or the yeah, the Broncos here. And it's questionable, but I got to give them the the benefit of the doubt, the doubt, just because of um, level. Of, I don't know. I do not know. They did beat the Raiders, who I do have a lot of respect for. Um, this is interesting. It's so it's so hard to gauge this, but man, that loss was just ugly, completely ugly. They just did not look like they belonged on that field against the Broncos. It's really hard for me to put put them here. Yeah, I got to move them down. Uh, just just on second thought, like I don't, I might be being too harsh, but like I said, if there was a little gap, you know, B plus, A minus, that would be them. And you know, I could make more, but I'm not doing that. I, I I'm not. I'm just not. Um, Patriots, in my opinion, are definitely the best team in this group um, but they would undoubtedly be the worst team in this group and I'm really thinking about putting the Titans back up but I just can't do it right now I just I just refuse to do it poverty um, <laughs> I shouldn't say poverty huh it's the Giants but still yeah uh, no Saquon Daniel Jones looks like Josh Allen Maybe a little bit better than him, but he just doesn't look like much of an upgrade of Josh Allen. Uh, and he's got, you know, the receivers. He's got a um, great tight end. He's got Darius Slayton. Like, what's not happening? You got the people, man. Make it happen. And he's not doing it. He's like three touchdowns, six picks. Like, guy flat out sucks right now. There's no other way to say it. No, Nothing else you can really say about it. Uh which uh, I don't like saying that in general. I just don't like calling NFL players, you know, saying they suck. But compared to the majority of quarterbacks in this league, he's just not – he's not even top 20 right now. Undoubtedly, there's no way he's top 20. So I would say he, he's got a lot more time to grow. Uh, he, he does look like he's a better decision maker than Josh Allen, and he makes better reads. His read, He progresses through his reads faster, but – Still yet, he, his game his game looks ugly right now, and he's got way way many more options to go to than Josh Allen at the Redskins. So we'll see, but for now, um, I'll leave them in the D just because they're not winning games. Uh, if we're talking about personnel wise, they could be C or B. I mean, they got Logan Ryan, they got a uh, uh, great defensive line, you know. They, uh, Damian Tomlinson, uh, Dexter Lawrence, and another guy, I forget his name. The front seven's really good, uh, and their secondary's not half bad. They got, Like I said, they picked up Logan Ryan from the Titans, one of the best corners, and moved him back to safety. Like They should be good, but I don't know what's going wrong. I, but i got to leave them at D for this season at least. They they just don't look impressive. First win coming on a 20-19 to 19 victory over Washington. Like, yeah. Saints, 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 Saints. Got to go A. Um, if it would let me, I would move them A. Uh, it's, come on, you know the Jets aren't up there. Uh, Saints are are weird, are a very weird team. Um, they have the same roster, you know they they have the same group. They got a good, they got a good edge rusher. They got a good uh, or not edge rusher per se, good power rusher. Um, they got a good defensive line. They got uh, people in the secondary that are very talented. And then they got Drew Brees, Alvin Kamara, and one of the best offensive lines in the league. Uh, I don't know if Michael Thomas is back yet, but once he comes back, they're definitely they're, they definitely go to S tier once Michael Thomas is back. But for now, I gotta leave them A. Hands down, they gotta be A. Um, I can't put them any higher. Um, still yet, nevertheless, they they will see S tier again this season. I feel like. Uh, but until they start winning more games or three and two, they they just they haven't earned it yet. In my opinion, they haven't earned it. Steelers, we know where they belong. That team is, in my opinion, the second best team in this league, uh, behind uh, Patty Mahomes, Kansas City led Chiefs. Uh, and some people are like, oh Seahawks, oh Ravens, oh uh, blah blah blah. I don't care. I don't care. This defensive line is the best defensive line I've seen in my lifetime easily. 
In the last 20 years, I couldn't name you a better defensive line. The last 30 years, I couldn't name you a better defensive line. Like Cam Hayward, TJ Watt, Bud Dupree, that is mean. They are mean up front. Nasty. And what did they do against the best rushing team in the league? 75 yards. That is a statement. 38-7 win. Steelers are nasty. You, you, want to, you want to talk about a nasty team up front, you go watch the Steelers. They're like that. I called this since the start of the season. I thought that Steelers were going to be one of the best teams in the league. I said they are going to win easily 11 or 12 games. I might have been wrong. They might win 14, 15, by the way they're playing. Um, then again, their schedule's not easy. they got to play the Colts. they got to play the Titans. There's a lot of teams they got to play in this AFC, uh, in the AFC that are – there are going to be difficult games for them, but I think that at right now I don't see a team that matches up with them other than Kansas City um, and maybe the Seahawks, but the Seahawks' offensive line so bad, I think I think that would be a horrible day for Russell Wilson, horrible day. Still yet, it's just my opinion. I'm one man. Green Bay, uh, if you let me move it. Ah, there we go. Yeah, Green Bay is definitely S-tier. Uh, they took a straight butt whooping the other day, but that was really like, what do you call that? Uh, floor versus ceiling uh, for one team. And you saw it on both both sides. It was the ceiling for Buccaneers and the floor for Green Bay. Uh, I took that from Strong Opinion Sports. I like his podcast. Uh, I like what he how he, how he really uh, explained that. I thought he explained that very well. Um. It was just it was just a tale of two teams. It's Aaron Rodgers throwing a pick six, third of his career, might I add, third. Yeah, you heard that right, third. Um, and then the Buccaneers. It was just Tom Brady didn't have to do much. No, it was just everything just seemed to work for him. It's like Green Bay really gave up. Once Aaron Rod, they saw Aaron Rodgers throw the two picks and gets rattled. Everyone else was rattled on the sideline. They didn't know what to do. Uh, and it really showed. It really did shine through. Um, but yeah, I still think Green Bay is S tier. Uh, like like Aaron Rodgers said, someone after the uh, <laughs> someone after the the uh, the game, man. What a jackass this dude was. <laughs> it was like uh, asking him something, and he's like, "Well, what are you trying to imply?" He's like, "You think teams have figured you out?" This this dude Aaron Rodgers has spent a whole career of fucking everybody he plays up, and then you're like, oh, did they figure you out? Man, come on, come on, dude. That's Aaron Rodgers, man. That's Hall of Fame first ballot golden jacket. That's all I gotta say. Still, yep. Hey, I mean, like I said, Aaron Rodgers has been just messing every team he's played up his whole career, and he's just never had a defense to back him up. This year he's got a defense. He plays bad one game. Oh, you think people figured you out? No, I'm playing with third-string receivers and, and an injured Devontae Adams. What do you want? Uh, still yet, we'll go on to the next team. Uh, right there. I think that is a perfect placement um, for the Panthers team. I don't think they're a C team. I think I think they they're well-deserving of this. B tier, uh, even though I thought the Panthers weren't going to be this good without CMC. Once CMC comes back, better watch out. That's all I got to say. They could impress. They could turn a few heads. Um, I don't think Teddy Bridgewater is the future on that team. don't think he's going to be. Uh, I don't think he's shown that he can be. But I think he's a really good bridge quarterback. Get it, Bridgewater, bridge. Uh, uh, yeah, anyways. Uh, next team, Bears. Uh, Bears A. I gotta give Bears the A. I, I think Bears are good. No doubt I think the Bears are good. Uh, and like I said, how many Super Bowls do you see teams win without a absolute crazy defense? Last one, okay, Patrick Mahomes, I'll give you that. Yeah, yeah. But the Patriots have dominated for the last 15 years with a crazy defense. The Seahawks went on them runs uh, with um, the Legion of Boom. Peyton Manning got his last ring off of Von Miller in that stacked defense. Like, defense wins championships. I Oh, it's an offensive league. No, it's not. It's never been. It never will be. A elite defense is going to mess any offense up. 
Offense is completely rhythm-based, and what happens when your offense has no rhythm? Your offense plays like shit. And your offense will continue to play like shit every time you play an elite defense. That's why the Bears beat the Buccaneers. Because they have an elite defense. They have Khalil Mack, Keem Hicks, where people are like, oh, Khalil Mack's having a down year. Horse shit. I watched him get seven pressures against the Colts. Should have had a sack and a half, but they both got called back due to a penalty. And him slamming. Uh, he should have had like three sacks versus the Bucks. What'd he do? He slammed Tom Brady once just to send him a message. Just to set the tone to let Tom Brady know he isn't going to be comfortable up back there. And after that play, Tom Brady had a 30% completion percentage for the rest of the game. Khalil Mack's mean, dude. Get that through your all's head, dude. Khalil Mack is here to stay. He's been here. He's not going anywhere. He'll probably be doing this till he's 35, 36. Dude's a stud. Uh, Raiders. Uh, this is a tough one. This is another one. B plus, A minus. But I got to give the Raiders B because I don't think the Raiders are more talented than any team in here. Undoubtedly, they're not talented more than any more talented than any team in here. And I can honestly say I think the Raiders is probably the most talented team here. So that's why I say they're really a B-plus team. Um, like I was saying, if if we had that second second level here, uh, we could move... We, we could probably move a few teams. Nah, I think these, these teams are good. This is pretty solid. Um, but definitely the Cards, Patriots, and... These guys, I think this team, this team, and this team is better than so far from what we've seen. Now, I could be wrong. That Jimmy Garoppolo could come back and be the savior from San Francisco and they go to the playoffs. Hey, and then I'm wrong. But still yet, he hasn't proved that. Um, Yeah, so next team, poverty. Um, Yeah, Mike Zimmer's probably out the door. He's on the hot seat, that's for damn sure. Kirk Cousins is playing horrible. This dude's threw uh, th two, three interception games this year. He's done. Uh, I don't know who they're going to draft over there, but they need somebody quick. Their defensive line, interior defensive line plays horrible. They got Unique and Gakwe, but uh, their other elite uh, pro bowler defensive end, I forget his name. It's not Everson Griffin. He left and went to the Cowboys. The other guy. Can't remember his name off the top of my head. Um but he's in, he's on the IR. But once he comes back, he'll be he'll make a huge impact for them with Unique and Gakwe. Uh, and then they got Anthony Barr and then Eric Kendricks. You know Harrison Smith. They got a good core there. They got a great defensive core. But uh, I don't know. They, they just they're just it's not coming together right now. Too many injuries and their offensive line plays horrible, horrendous. Uh, Kirk Cousins losing Stephon Diggs is obviously an issue. Uh, whether people want to admit it or not, that is a horrible loss, and it's really showing on the offense. So, yeah, i got to leave them in D. They're poverty level right now. <clears throat> Kansas City, boom, you know where they're the Number one team in the league, uh, hands down. I don't care who they lost to. I don't care what happened. Um... Colts beat the Colts beat the Chiefs last year and ended up going seven and nine, uh, and the Raiders are probably destined for a eight and eight, nine and seven season, maybe nine and seven. That, that, that's a maybe. Uh, I, their defense is just bad. Their pass rush to to uh, secondary, like pass pass rush to pass coverage combo, is like uh, like twenty fifth in the league or something. It's just horrible. It's horrendous. So I really can't give them any respect until they have some kind of defensive consistency. But their offense is great, you know. Uh, they don't have Richie Incognito due to Achilles injury, and he is definitely their second-best offensive lineman behind uh, Rodney Hudson. But their offensive line is still good. They got that great right tackle. Uh, they got Rodney Hudson. Uh, and they got one more person on their offensive line that really stands out to me, but I can't bl remember him now, but I know he's there. Um, so, yeah, I think – I think the Raiders are, <clears throat> like I said, they're they're like a B plus. They're a B plus, hundred uh, percent. So is this team, and so is this team. In my opinion, they the Cardinals haven't showed it enough yet. But in my heart, I feel like they're going to be that B plus area. Could be A by the end of this season. Uh, Jets, Jags. <laughs> yeah, you know where this team belongs. Boom. <laughs> they're bad, man. They're so bad. They're so bad. Um. Damian Williams is pretty much – Sam Donald hasn't had anybody the whole season. 
Uh, Denzel Mims is going to be coming back this week, so that's going to be interesting to see him and Darnold. Uh, or Darnold have another weapon on offense, but their offensive line's been a little bit better, like I said, but their defense is so terrible. It's horrible. Um... Robbie Anderson left, and he's balling out. And Robbie Anderson was really just a decoy on that team anyways because Adam Gase don't know how to use him. Um, but still yet, yeah, I think Jets are poverty, obviously, 0-7. Worst team in the league. But they have bright spots. And then right here, Jaguars are there too. Jaguars, the start of the season, they beat the Colts. People were like, ooh, watch out for the Jags. Uh, that game was fluke. I'm a Colts fan. I've called it fluke since it happened. And it's shown through. Teams are figuring out this Garner Minshew uh, offense. It, it's not good. Their offensive line play has been better. They got uh, a decent receiving core. Uh, Garner Minshew's arm talent just isn't what it should be. If he had a better arm talent, yeah, he that team might be a little bit different, but he doesn't. So they're 1-5 as a result. <clears throat> they could be so much better. Uh, they do have a good young defense, do, young core. Uh, Schobert. Um, Miles Jack, uh, Josh Allen, Taven Bryant, like they have, they, you know, C.J. Henderson, that's five people that are actually talented and young on that defense. So they, they got, you know, they got the core. It's just, you know, the next couple of years, we could see a 2017 Jaguars pop up. Uh, if they if they stack defense again this draft, it, we could see a different Jaguar squad, and it would be really cool to see that. Even though, you know, I'm a Colts fan, but I hate seeing the Jaguars struggle because um, I really like their fan base. Like, every uh, the majority of Texans fans I've ever talked to online or the majority of um, Titans fans are always just so bitter towards the Colts because the Colts have really just ran the AFC South since 2002. Uh, but the Jaguars aren't, dude. They just want to. They just want to win. They, they're they're tired of their franchise being bad. They want to win, and so I'm all for it. You know, I'm all for it. But uh, yeah, that's all I have for this video. It's all the picks. Um, you know, in the comments, guys, just let me know what you think about these teams. Uh, you know where I should put them. You know, if you want to see a power ranking, an actual power rankings video, let me know in the comments. Just tell me what you think about that. But, uh, yeah, this is my power rankings. Uh, I really feel pretty confident about it where I put some of these people. Like I said, if there's an A-plus, you know, B-minus, uh, B-minus, C-plus, you know what I'm saying? If there was just an in-between for some of these teams, I'd put them there. But I think this is pretty good. I think this is exactly where they should be. Um, you know, some losses are inexcusable, some aren't. And for Green Bay, and the, and, you know, if you're a Patriots fan, you're a Green Bay fan watching this. Or if you're a Patriots fan and you're a Buccaneers fan watching this and you're like, oh, you're not giving my team enough respect, you know, until this until this week where the Buccaneers beat Green Bay, I would have probably put the Bucks at B, you know. And then before Patriots lost to uh, the Broncos, I probably would have put them at A. But, you know, it's just like – I know there's going to be Buccaneers fans just like, oh, we should be S, blah, blah, blah. You're not as good as any team out there. I don't care if you beat Green Bay that one game. I guarantee you the result is different next time you all play. I would almost put my life savings on it. it you know, even if you all won, it wouldn't be like that. And Aaron Rodgers is better than Tom Brady, whether you like it or not. Um, if Aaron Rodgers got a hold of Antonio Brown somehow, uh, you all would be in for it. But still, yet, um, I think these are pretty accurate. Like I said, the, just the few things, you know, uh, Buccaneers could move up. Uh, supposedly, Patriots could move up. Um, Raiders, maybe. But I think this is pretty fair. I don't think any of these teams are as talented as any of these teams in here. And just like I don't think, you know, okay, yeah, and the Titans, too. Okay, the Titans, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just not sold. Like I said, I'm not sold. Until they Once they play the Steelers, we'll see where they really are because the Steelers beat the brakes off the Browns. If it's the same outcome, then, yeah, they deserve to be an A. But then again, we'll see. But hey, if you're still here, I appreciate you being here. You know, if you like this content, if you like seeing power rankings and tiers, team tiers, um, just let me know in the comments. You know, I'll, I'll keep making more of them. But, uh, yeah, with that being said... Like, comment, subscribe, and until next time, guys, peace.